Item number, SCP-597. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-597 is to be guarded and researched by a rotating monthly shift. Those in charge of the design of the containment procedures are not allowed contact with the SCP. If at all possible, this duty should be left to overseer-level personnel. No one is to be allowed to view, on video or through a window, or be in the same room as SCP-597 for longer than five hours. Maintenance personnel are to alternate every day. Evaluations are to be given at the end of the shift, or whenever mental distress seems obvious. If psychological contamination is too great and poses a tangible danger, termination can be performed immediately by the on-site analyst. The mental health offices are soundproofed for this purpose. The doctor can terminate up to ten individuals at a time. Any more requires the approval of an overseer. In this scenario, Procedure 59732, weaning the babies, is to be activated. Vents in the ceiling require regular maintenance for this purpose. Smoke detectors are not to be turned off for any reason. Candles and incense lit in 597's cell are to be taken as an indication of a dangerous obsession. The leaving and offering of food, as 597 does not require it, is to be viewed in the same light as well. All other signs of unnatural love and religious awe are to be reported along with these. The room and the surrounding area are to be sealed with ventilation shafts, plumbing, and wiring checked daily. Measures are to be put into place for the continuous extermination of all vermin in the facility. Animals not part of the study found suckling on SCP-597 are to be removed and terminated as soon as possible due to risk of biological contamination. Because of this, in the morning, workers must wear hazmat suits while entering the cell, for SCP-597 is often covered in vermin, including mice, opossums, squirrels, and bats. 597 is to be hosed down weekly, with special care given to the areas around the nipples to prevent the buildup of saliva and drool. Those suckling need washing daily, as does the floor underneath them, for the removal of the puddles of urine, feces, for the first few days. But when solids completely leave the body, this is no longer necessary, although occasionally a thin watery substance is excreted, and vomit, which is produced when they drink too eagerly, quickly, or out of rhythm. The cleaning products are to be plain and unscented. Use of aromatics or herbal oils will be noted and no scrubbing is to be done by hand. Description SCP-597 is a blob of flesh, approximately 5.8 meters, or 19 feet, high, and 10.67 meters, or 35 feet wide, although this measurement changes slightly when it moves, or the substances expand and ripple. All over its body, mostly located on its rolls, are hundreds and hundreds of teats of various colors and sizes. Whenever a mammal is released into its cell, it will be drawn to the corresponding teat for its species and then proceed to suckle as long as they are unimpeded. The milk released will be identical in every way to the makeup of the subject's mothers, although able to sustain the subject's nutritional needs indefinitely. While the fluid is the same as normal milk chemically, for some reason, whether it be an effect of the SCP or an unknown quality of the substances it excretes, any full-grown mammal that would normally require more can survive to the end of their normal lifespan, give or take a few years, simply by suckling at the nipple, although their teeth will fall out. Their muscle will atrophy due to lack of use. The subjects will curl up as close as possible on the side, lay under the SCP. There have been reports of suffocation or immerse themselves and dive into the flesh itself, and stomach problems are presented because of the all-liquid diet. Milk taken in a bottle does not have the same results, although those already affected by SCP-597 will fall under a quasi-hypnotic hold when presented with a container, will do anything to possess it, and find drinking it very gratifying.
Those in charge of bottling the liquid have the urge to use a rubber teat for feeding babies as a cover, even when a normal lid will suffice, and will attempt to do so even when informed that it is in violation of dangerous materials protocol, not being an airtight seal. The urge to suckle is a mental, physical, and sexual compulsion. While lower life forms cannot resist its effects at all, humans can, although they experience great difficulty. Those in SCP-597's presence describe it as a mental pull, leading us to the conclusion that it is partially telepathic, although it is also obviously appeals to deep instincts, and is hormonal as well. Endorphins associated with breastfeeding and maternal comfort are released. Those who do give in do so in a mad rush, all restraint broken at once, or a slow ritual, commonly involving bowing, kneeling, crawling, and chanting. They are reduced quickly to an infantile state, and within one hour, lose all linguistic abilities, intellectual capabilities, and willpower. Before complete loss of brain function, it is said to be highly comforting and pleasurable, and they say they feel safe, quote, like never before, end quote. Before and after contact is made, there are reports of strong feelings associated with vague images and recollections and sensations, all traced back to the womb or crib, often centered around remembrance of their parents' smell and facial appearance. Data expunged. Retarded blind data expunged. Permanently attached. Data expunged. Data expunged. Those who watch are also influenced although in lesser or different ways. Increased pettiness, regression to childish states, extreme immaturity, decreased bowel control, fetishization, promiscuity, and even reports of public masturbation have all been noted. Staff's IQ, focus, and rationality all drop significantly over a period of time with SCP-597 and they often will fight with each other over silly things, such as objects or perceived insults, be racked with laughing and crying fits, be unable to resolve problems in an adult way, and lose the ability to control their emotions. After four to five weeks, it is impossible for them to function in a work setting, and they all communicate with each other with a series of grunts, coos, and short, confused sentences. Attention should also be paid to the fact that the employee's name for the object degenerates from the official title, SCP-597 to The Mother, then to just Mother, then Mom, Mommy, Mum, and so forth, often ending in sucking, blowing, or kissing sounds as the representation. Also of interest is that almost immediately strong oral fixations will develop or resurface, those who quit smoking will start again, 100% occurrence, and the chewing of gum, snacking, gluttony, nail and lip biting, and hair chewing rises as well, almost to the point of psychosis. There are deadly weight gains, choking incidents, balls or clumps of human material obstructing the digestive system, murders over food, the vending machine is often completely empty, and dental and health problems. Doctors and personnel in the area of effect, even those entering for a few moments, will find themselves absent-mindedly putting something in their mouth without realizing it. Observation of the employees in their homes or private lives also reveals data expunged, often to the point of only being aroused by data expunged. Men with already unstable or fragile egos find a strengthening in oedipal complexes, often to dangerous levels. Three employees have raped and murdered Data Expunged. These same personality types also enjoy Data Expunged and request access to SCP-597 for that purpose. Unfortunately, although this behavior is not encouraged, those with this disease are many, too many to take a moral or ideological stance and completely restrict the activity without losing the needed number of workers. A good number are also high-level personnel, although revelation of their identity is forbidden and requires clearing the area and disabling the camera feed so they can perform the act.
which is not allowed to go over an hour, or separation will cause seizures and homicidal tantrums. Specific procedures for sexual visits can be found in Document 597-XD-12. Addendum 1 Document 597-XX-23 Found currently at 597's base and sides are 61 specimens suckling. They are 4 dogs at its bottom area, laying out in front of it like a litter. 6 cats. 27 rats hanging off its front. The wild vermin swarms that often hoard around it are especially problematic. But these are all lab-bred, except for SCP-597 SS-19 and SCP-597 SS-24, which refuse to be removed and are clamped too tightly on just to pull off. 15 bats that cover approximately all of its back, their wings flapping spasmodically, creating a slight gust. 8 humans, 4 D-Class personnel, 3 doctors, 1 guard. Addendum 2 Document 597-XD-12 Data expunged Data expunged Data expunged. Care must be taken not to allow them to attempt to rip or tear a hole in 597 for penetration purposes. Data expunged. Addendum 3. Document 597-XX-25. An all-female task force has been shown not to be more effective in containment, as demonstrated by three events. The development of bisexual tendencies in Data Expunged. The loss of five female guards who after writing Mommy, Mommy, How I Love My Mommy all over the walls of the cell were lost and began suckling and the suicide of Dr. Vanison, who after circling each and every teat in red sharpie marker and writing life next to them, shot herself in the head. Addendum 4 Document 597-XYC-13 Data expunged. Data expunged. Inside the temple, the SCP was found, surrounded by scaffolding and staircases, with ladders propped up against the meat to allow as many people as possible to partake in the event. Data expunged. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, Go watch SCP-596, Cursed Regeneration Statue, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.